Hello, welcome to Higher English SQA Revision Support. Learning Intentions. We will continue to consolidate our learning of the poem Aunt Julia by Norman McCaig. We will continue to learn the connections between Aunt Julia and the other five poems we have been studying. Success Criteria. I can show my understanding of Aunt Julia without using my notes. I can make clear connections between Aunt Julia and the other five poems we have been studying without using notes. On this slide, you'll see the updated guidance from the SQE, which was published in March 2022. It gives general guidance about all exams, not specific to English. Throughout the lesson, you will see various symbols on the slides to indicate what you should do. Here are symbols which may be used and what they mean. Take some time just now to familiarise yourself with these. The exam. Paper 1, the Reading for Understanding Analysis and Evaluation paper, also known as RUEE, takes place on Wednesday the 11th of May from 9 to 10.30am. Paper 2, the Critical Reading paper, Critical Essay and Scottish Set Text, takes place on Wednesday the 11th of May from 11am till 12.30. Exam content. By this point, you'll already know that Aunt Julia is going to be the provided poem in the Higher English SQA exam, and you'll know it very well. Everything we look at during this lesson will consolidate your understanding of the poem. Use the following links to revise the poem and test yourself before we continue. So, now that you've done some revision on Aunt Julia, we're going to think about how you should structure your textual analysis questions on the poem. I think the QTIL formula is a good one to remember. However, you might do it differently or just answer the questions in a more natural way. Now, that's absolutely fine. But if you did want to use this formula, this is what I would do. So first of all, provide your quotation. So textual evidence from the poem. Identify the technique that you've quoted. Analyse by using your RUEE structures. For example, if you're quoting imagery, just as and so too. Then link your analysis to the question and include evaluation. So this is how I would structure it. The first task we're going to complete is called Gimme Five and it's a retrieval task. You're going to be given eight minutes to complete this and you should not look at the poem when you complete this task. Write down five sentences to summarise the key events within the poem. Provide four examples of symbolism. Write down three examples of powerful word choice. Make a note of two examples of effective use of sound. Copy down one example of humour used by McCaig. Making connections. We are now going to spend some time thinking about the connections between Aunt Julia and the other poems we've studied by McCaig. In this section, we're going to focus on the following themes. Love, identity, isolation and relationships. Be ready to pause the video and make notes as appropriate. The first theme that we're going to think about is the theme of love. In Aunt Julia, McCaig's deep affection for his Aunt Julia is made clear through his grief, his frustration at his inability to communicate with her and his affectionate tone for her. Key quotations include, while her right hand drew yarn marvellously out of the air, Hers was the only house, and, but I hear her still. In visiting hour, McCaig is visiting his dying loved one in hospital. He knows that it's probably the last time he will see her, and he is struggling to control his emotions. Key quotations include, I will not feel, I will not feel, until I have to. Love also occurs in Brooklyn Cop. The cop is clearly in love with his wife and addresses her with affection in the poem. It's clear that their love provides a warm and pleasant atmosphere at home. Key quotations include, when he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it, he truly hoped it, and whom hiya honey is no cliche. Remember to pause the video and add them to your notes as appropriate. We are now going to think about the theme of identity and where Aunt Julia links with other poems through this theme. Aunt Julia is synonymous with nature, hard work and independence. She also represents the Highland culture. 
key quotes include, Aunt Julia spoke Gaelic very loud and very fast. She wore men's boots when she wore any. And she was buckets and water flouncing into them. In Assisi, the beggar is judged because of the way that he looks. We find that we too judge the beggar and don't expect his inner beauty. Key quotes include tiny twisted legs and said grazie in a voice as sweet as a child's when she speaks to her mother. Remember to pause the video and add anything into your notes that you find relevant. In Brooklyn Cop, as soon as the cop puts on his uniform, he takes on a tough guy persona in order to survive the horrors of his job. He must be able to separate his working life and his home life. Key quotes include, he is a gorilla. We are now going to look at the theme of isolation. In Aunt Julia, McCaig felt isolated when his aunt was alive as he could not communicate with her. In her death, he felt isolated in that he will never get this opportunity back. Key quotes include, I could not understand her. I could not understand her. Hers was the only house, and by the time I had learned a little, absolute black of a sandy grave. In Assisi, clearly the beggar is isolated within the poem, as he is ignored by those who are in a position to help him. It's as if he's invisible to the outside world. Key quotes include, sat slumped like a half-filled sack, outside the three tiers of churches. It was they who had passed the ruined temple outside. Isolation also occurs in visiting hour, as the speaker feels isolated on his visit to the hospital. Furthermore, his dying loved one is isolated within their illness. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel. She lies in a white cave of forgetfulness. And finally, and between her and me, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. Isolation also occurs in Brooklyn Cop, and this time the cop feels isolated from the rest of civilised society as he battles against criminals. Key quotes include, see you babe, to his wife. He hoped it, he truly hoped it. And he walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. Isolation occurs in hotel room 12th floor, as although they are surrounded by millions of people in New York, the persona feels lonely in his hotel room and far removed from the world around him. Key quotes include, this morning I watch from here, midnight has come in from foreign places and I lie in bed between a radio and a television set. Then we have Baskin Shark and isolation is felt in enabling his change in thinking. And key quotes include, he displaced more than water, swish up the dirt, and when it settles, a spring is all the clearer. I saw me in one fling, emerging from the slime of everything. So who's the monster? And finally, the thought made me grow pale. The final theme we're going to explore in this section is relationships. In Aunt Julia, it's clear that McCaig has a close bond with his Aunt Julia, as demonstrated by the frustration and grief that he feels in their permanent separation. Key quotes include, I could not answer her, I could not understand her. Hers was the only house where I've lain at night in the absolute darkness of a box bed, listening to crickets being friendly. She was brown eggs, but I hear her still, and with so many questions unanswered. In the poem Assisi, McCaig looks at the relationship between the tourists, the priest and the beggar. Key quotes include, a rush of tourists clucking contentedly fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. And finally, it was they who had passed the ruined temple outside whose eyes wet pus. Now remember to add anything into your notes as we're doing this. In visiting hour, McCaig shows the strength the persona has with his loved one in hospital, as he is overcome with grief, as it may be their final meeting. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. The distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross, and books that will not be read in fruitless fruits. And finally, in Basking Shark, the relationship that the persona builds briefly with the shark forces him to reevaluate humans and their stance in society. 
Key quotes include, he shoggled me centuries back. Swish up the dirt and when it settles, a spring is all the clearer. I saw me in one fling emerging from the slime of everything. And so who's the monster? For our next revision task, we are going to think about the A to Z of keywords in Aunt Julia. You're going to be given nine minutes to work on this and you may look at your copy of the poem to complete this task. For this particular retrieval task, try to fill in every letter of the alphabet as much as possible with keywords or phrases from your knowledge of the poem Aunt Julia. You may use your notes whilst doing it and I've completed the first couple to get you started. You're doing really well. Try and fill in as many as you can. It may not be possible for all of them, but try your hardest. And remember to pause the video so you can complete this. Making connections. We are now going to spend some time thinking about the connections between Aunt Julia and the other poems we have studied by McCaig. And in this section, we're going to focus on the following themes, frustration, anger, grief, loss, and suffering. The theme of frustration. In Aunt Julia, the persona's frustration is clear as he could not communicate with his auntie due to his communication barrier while she was alive. And now that she's dead, he will never be able to. Key quotes include, I could not answer her. I could not understand her. By the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. And finally, getting angry, getting angry, with so many questions unanswered. In Visiting Hour, pain and frustration is explored as McCaig forces us to look at the cruelty of the dying process. Key quotes include, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. And a gentle reminder to add into your notes anything that you haven't already got here. In Assisi, the reader is left feeling frustrated on behalf of the beggar. He is ignored by those who are in a position to help him and by those who claim to be following God's word. Key quotes include, a rush of tourists cl clucking contentedly, fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. I understood the explanation and the cleverness. And finally, it was they who had passed the ruined temple outside, whose eyes wept pus. Now we're going to look at the theme of anger. In Aunt Julia, the narrator is angry because he'll no longer be able to communicate with his auntie because of her death. And prior to this, he couldn't communicate with her due to her language, the language barrier. Key quotes include, I could not answer her, I could not understand her, and by the time I learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave, and finally, getting angry, getting angry, with so many questions unanswered. In Assisi, anger is felt as the poet overlooks the scene unfolding, knowing that there are people who should be helping the defenceless beggar, but who choose to ignore him. Key quotes include, a rush of tourists clucking contentedly, fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. I understood the explanation and the cleverness, and it was they who had passed the ruined temple outside whose eyes wet puffs. Now, the theme of grief. In Aunt Julia, the poem focuses on the grief that the persona feels after the death of his auntie. Key quotes include, by the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. But I hear her still welcoming me with a seagull's voice and getting angry, getting angry with so many questions unanswered. And this links to visiting hour as in this poem, McCaig focuses on the impending grief that the persona feels as he goes to visit his loved one in hospital for what is probably the last time. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to and distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. Remember to add this into your revision notes if you need to. The theme of loss. In Aunt Julia, McCaig explores the loss the persona feels after the death of his auntie. Key quotes include, I can see her strong foot stained with peat. Hers was the only house where I've lain at night, listening to crickets being friendly. She was buckets and water flouncing into them. Aunt Julia spoke Gaelic very loud and very fast. By the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. But I hear her still 
welcoming me with a seagull's voice. Getting angry, getting angry with so many questions unanswered. In Assisi, McCaig focuses on the loss of compassion within society and our lack of empathy for others. Key quotes include the dwarf with his hands on backwards, sat outside the three tiers of churches built in honour of St Francis, brother of the poor. I understood the explanation and the cleverness. A rush of tourists, clucking contentedly, fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. It was they who had passed the ruined temple outside, whose eyes wept pus, and said grazie in a voice as sweet as a child's when she speaks to her mother, or a bird's when it spoke to St Francis. Loss occurs in visiting hour. In this poem, McCaig focuses on the impending death of the persona's cherished loved one. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. And between her and me, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. In Brooklyn Cop, McCaig explores the loss of civilised behaviour. Key quotes include, he walks the sidewalk in the thin tissue over violence. When he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it, he truly hoped it. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence? What gunshots between Phoebe's wham burger and Lou's place? Gorilla with a nightstick. Who would be him whose home is a place he might, this time, never get back to? And, and who would be who have to be his victims? Loss also occurs in Hotel Room 12th Floor. And in this poem, McCaig focuses on the loss of humanity within society. Key quotes include a helicopter skirting like a damaged insect. But now midnight has come in from foreign places. Its uncivilised darkness is shot by a million lit windows, all ups and crosses. Police cars and ambulances racing to broken bones. Harsh screaming from cold water flats, the blood, gla blood glazed on the sidewalks. And the frontier is never somewhere else, and no stockades can keep the midnight out. And in Baskin Shark, McCaig deals with our loss of closeness to nature. And key quotes include this decadent townie shook on a wrong branch of his family, family tree. Swish up the dirt and when it settles, a spring is all the clearer. I saw me in one final fling, emerging from the slime of everything. And so who's the monster? And again, if you hadn't thought about the poems in this particular way before, make sure you're adding some information into your revision books. OK, you're doing really well so far, folks. The final theme that we're going to focus on in this particular section is suffering. In Aunt Julia, McCaig demonstrates the theme of suffering as the persona is upset about the death of his auntie and the finality of their separation. Key quotes include, by the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. Getting angry, getting angry, and with so many questions unanswered. In Assisi, the beggar is a, in Assisi is clearly in pain and suffering due to his different deformities. Key quotes include the dwarf with, with his hands on backwards, sat slumped like a half-filled sack, on tiny twisted legs from which sawdust might run. He had the advantage of not yet being dead. The ruined temple, his eyes wept pus, and whose back was higher than his head. In visiting hour, McCaig displays suffering as he's struggling to cope with a visit to hospital to visit his dying loved one. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. And between her and me, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. In Brooklyn Cop, McCaig explores the theme of suffering through his depiction of the ugliness of violence and he uses the setting of New York City streets to do this. Key quotes include, he walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. Should the violence tear, should he plunge through into violence? What clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's wham burger and Louis' place? Whose home is a place he might this time never get back to? And, and who would be who have to be his victims? 
In Hotel Room 12th Floor, similarly to Brooklyn Cop, McCaig explores the ugliness of New York City life and the violence that goes hand in hand with this. Key quotes include the Empire State Building, that jumbo-sized dentist drill, uncivilised darkness, wildest of war hoops, police cars and ambulances racing to broken bones, the harsh screaming from cold water flats, the blood glazed on the sidewalks, and no stockades can keep the midnight out. And finally, in Basking Shark, here McCaig explores the ugliness of our, our detachment from nature. Key quotes include this decadent townie, I saw me in one fling emerging from the slime of everything, and so here's the monster. So remember to pause the video if you want to make any notes from these slides, and we're now about to move on to another activity. For our third retrieval task, we're going to do a think and link task. And you should take around six minutes to do this. You should not look at your copy of the poem when you're completing this task. OK, you can see that we have a little table here. And what we're going to do is we're going to think about the connections between Aunt Julia and one of the other poems that we've been studying. So I want you to draw this table into your jotters or in line paper, or you could do it on your computer, and think about how the two poems connect. So make some notes before you move on to the next one. Making connections. We're now going to continue thinking about the connections between Aunt Julia and the other poems we've studied by McCaig. And in this particular section, we're going to focus on the following themes and techniques of nature, mortality, strong emotions and sentence structure. Now remember to pause the video at any point to add into your notes. The first theme that we're going to think about in this section is nature. In Aunt Julia, McCaig focuses on nature through the natural landscape and Aunt Julia's clear connection to the natural world. Key quotes include, I can see her strong foot stained with peat. She was buckets and water flouncing into them. She was winds pouring wetly round house ends. She was brown eggs, a sandy grave at Lusk and Tyre, with a seagull's voice and peat scrapes. Nature is also explored in Assisi, but this time McCaig explores the theme through his references to birds and the varying relationships of people to them. Key quotes include St Francis, brother of the poor, talker with birds. A rush of tourists clucking contentedly fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. And finally, or a birds when it spoke to St Francis. In Visiting Hour, McCaig focuses on the relationship between life and death in the natural cycle of this. Key quotes include, a withered hand trembles on its stalk, eyes move behind eyelids too heavy to raise, and black figure in her white cave. In Brooklyn Cop, McCaig focuses on the difference between violence and human nature. Key quotes include, built like a gorilla, but less timid, what clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's Wamburger and Louis Place, and Gorilla with a Nightstick. Now remember, if there's anything that you need to add into your notes, now would be a good time to pause the lesson and add things in. In Hotel Room 12th Floor, nature is explored as we see the difficulty of nature thriving in an urban environment. Key quotes include a helicopter skirting like a damaged insect, the wildest of war whoops continually ululating through the glittering canyons and gulches, and no stockades can keep the midnight out. Finally, in Basking Shark, in this poem, McCaig explores the difference between animal and human nature. Key quotes include that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain, I saw me in one fling emerging from the slime of everything, and so who's the monster? Okay. So now we're going to look at the theme of mortality. And remember, if there's anything that you haven't considered before, remember to add it into your notes. In Aunt Julia, mortality is explored as it's clear that the persona is grieving and feels remorseful about his inability to communicate with his auntie when she was alive. Key quotes include, by the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. But I hear her still, welcoming me with a seagull's voice. 
getting angry, getting angry with so many questions unanswered. And in visiting hour, McCaig explores mortality as he looks at what we assume will be the final visit to a dying loved one in hospital. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. She lies in a white cave of forgetfulness. Into an arm wasted of colour, a glass fang is fixed, not guzzling but giving. And between her and me, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross, and black figure in her white cave. Mortality also features in Brooklyn Cop, and in this poem the cop faces the possibility of death on a daily basis. He never knows when he's going to see his loved one for the last time. Key quotes include, when he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it, he truly hoped it. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence? What clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's Wamburger and Louis's place? Who would be him, whose home is a place he might this time never get back to? And who would be who have to be his victims? We are now going to look at the theme of strong emotions. In Aunt Julia, the strong emotions of grief, regret and anger are focused on as the persona explores the death of his auntie. Key quotes include, I could not answer her. I could not understand her. Hers was the only house where I've lain at night. By the time I've learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. But I hear her still, welcoming me with a seagull's voice. In Assisi, the strong emotions of anger and frustration are felt through the persona, who watches the beggar being continually ignored. The emotion of empathy is also explored as it looks at the lack of empathy within society. Key quotes include, sat slumped like a half-filled sack. I understood the explanation and the cleverness. It was they who had passed the ruined temple outside. So remember, take the opportunity now to pause the lesson if you need to add anything into your notes. Strong emotions also occur in visiting hour. The emotions of grief and isolation are quite prominent here. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. And between her and me, distance shrinks till the there is none left but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross, and books that will not be read and fruitless fruits. In Brooklyn Cop, the main emotion is fear. The cop goes to work every day, unsure of whether he will return due to the dangers involved in his job. Key quotes include, when he said, see you babe, to his wife, and who would be him? Gorilla with a nightstick, whose home is a place he might, this time, never get back to. In Hotel Room 12th Floor, McCaig explores the emotions of isolation and helplessness. Key quotes include, This morning I watched from here. I lie in bed between a radio and a television set. Police cars and ambulances racing to broken bones. Harsh screaming from cold water flats. The blood glazed on the sidewalks. And and no stockades can keep midnight out. And in Baskin Shark, the strong emotion is fear. Key quotes include, is a thing that happened once too often to me, and he displaced more than water. Okay, folks, we're doing really, really well. We are now going to focus on the first technique and that sentence structure. In Aunt Julia, McCaig uses enjoyment to show his frustration and upset with the passing of his auntie, and dashes in order to show how in tune his auntie was with the natural world and how practical she was. Key quotes include, I could not remember her. I could not understand her. I can see her strong foot stained with peat. Hers was the only house where I've lain at night. By the time I learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. But I hear her still, welcoming me with a seagull's voice and getting angry, getting angry with so many questions unanswered. In Assisi, McCaig also uses enjoyment in order to emphasise the poor treatment of the beggar, the pain he's in 
in the contrast between his ugly exterior and his beautiful surroundings. Key quotes include, hands on backwards, sat slumped like a half-filled sack. Tiny twisted legs from which sawdust might run outside the three tiers of churches built in honour of St Francis. A rush of tourists clucking contentedly fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. And it was they who had passed the ruined temple outside whose eyes wept pus. Again, if you want to pause the video to make some notes, please take the opportunity to do so now. Enjambment is also used in visiting hour, this time to show how distressed the persona is who's visiting his loved one in hospital for what they believe to be the last time. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. She lies in a white cave of forgetfulness. And between her and me, distance shrinks till there is none left, but the distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. And leaving behind only books that will not be read and fruitless fruits. And then we have Brooklyn Cop. And in this poem, McKay uses enjambment in order to show us the violence faced by cops every day in Brooklyn and the fear that they feel. Key quotes include, he walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. This morning when he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it, he truly hoped it. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence, what clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's Wamburger and Lou's place? Who would be him? Gorilla with a nightstick, whose home is a place he might this time never get back to. And finally, and who would be who have to be his victims? In Hotel Room 12th Floor, McCaig looks at the dangers of the modern world and the violence of inner New York City. He also explores isolation through his use of enjambment and dashes. Key quotes include, like a damaged insect, the Empire State Building. Its uncivilised darkness is shot at by a million lit windows, all ups and crosses. I lie in bed between a radio and a television set. The wildest of war hoops continually ululating through the glittering canyons and gulches. Police cars and ambulances racing to broken bones. The harsh screaming from cold water flats. The blood glazed on the sidewalks. And no stockades can keep the midnight out. <clears throat> And finally, in Baskin Shark, McCaig explores his realisation about humans and their destructive nature through his use of enjambment in short sentences. He also uses dashes, parenthesis and rhetorical questions to explore the effect this encounter had on his perspective. Key quotes include, is a thing that happened once too often to me, but not too often, though enough. He displaced more than water. He shoggled me centuries back this decadent townie shook on a wrong branch of his family tree. I saw me in one fling emerging from the slime of everything. And so who's the monster? Okay, now it's time to do another little exercise and think about everything we know about Aunt Julia quotations. So this ta task should take you about four minutes and you shouldn't look at your copy of the poem when you're completing this task. Okay. You can see the table in front of you, and on the left hand side you have the start of different quotations from Aunt Julia. So what I would like you to do is finish off the quotation from your own memory. So remember, try not to look at your own notes when you're doing this. See if you can do it from memory. Good luck! This now brings us to our final section of making connections. And we are now going to spend some time thinking about the connections between Aunt Julia and the other poems that we've studied and we're going to focus solely on techniques in this section. And we're going to focus on sound, imagery, symbolism and contrast. So make sure you've got your notes ready to add some detail in there. In Aunt Julia, McCaig uses sound in order to bring Aunt Julia to life and show how self-sufficient she is, how domesticated she is and how in tune with nature she is. Key quotes include, she was winds pouring wetly and she was brown eggs and black skirts. In Assisi, McCaig uses alliteration in order to emphasise the pain that the beggar must be in and the fact that people who can help him choose to ignore him. Key quotes for this include sat slumped like a half-filled sack and clucking contentedly. 
In Visiting Hour, a harsh G sound used by McCaig reveals the persona's shock at seeing his loved one attached to the drip. Key quotes here would be a glass fang is fixed, not guzzling but giving. And in Brooklyn Cop, sound is used by McCaig in order to convey the violence faced by the cop as he tries to do his daily job. Clubbings and Wamburger are two key quotes here. You can see the onomatopoeia used there. In Hotel Room 12th Floor, similarly to Brooklyn Cop, onomatopoeia is used here in order to replicate the violence of the poem. So we have wildest of war whips, ululating, gulches and screaming. In Basking Shark, McCaig uses sound in order to show the shock of the encounter on McCaig, the size of the shark and the impact that it came to have on him. Key quotes include stub, slounge, room-sized monster with a matchbox brain, shoggled and swish. Okay, now let's look at imagery. In Aunt Julia, McCaig uses imagery in order to create a clear picture of Aunt Julia as someone who is pragmatic, has a close bond with nature and is very practical. Key quotes include, she was buckets and water flouncing into them. She was winds pouring wetly. She was brown eggs, black skirts and a keeper of three penny bits. And a seagull's voice. In Assisi, McCaig uses imagery in order to emphasise the dwarf's inner beauty, his pain and the hypocrisy of the church. Key quotes for this include slumped like a half-filled sack, a rush of tourists clucking contentedly, fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word, and the ruined temple outside. Imagery is used by McCaig in Visiting Hour in order to show how close McCaig's loved one is to death, along with the grief that he feels. Key quotes include, she lies in a white cave of forgetfulness, a withered hand trembles on its stalk. A glass fang is fixed. The distance of pain that neither her nor I can cross. Black figure in her white cave and fruitless fruits. And in Brooklyn Cop, imagery is also used to show how intimidating the cop is in appearance as he has to maintain a persona when he's out at work faced with violence every single day. And key quotes for this include built like a gorilla, Thick-fleshed, steak-coloured, with two hieroglyphs in his face, and gorilla with a nightstick. In Hotel Room 12th Floor, the sheer size of the Empire State Building is focused on through the imagery used by McCaig along with the ugliness of the modern world. Key quotes include a helicopter skirting like a damaged insect and that jumbo-sized dentist drill. In Baskin Shark, Imagery is used in order to show the effect that the experience had on McCaig, the scale of the shark and its inability to harm compared to adults. Key quotes include, on a sea tin tacked with rain, that room sized monster with a matchbox brain, emerging from the slime of everything and so who's the monster? And a gentle reminder to update any existing notes that you have. Okay. We're now going to move on to symbolism. In Aunt Julia, she is symbolic of a way of life that has died, and McCaig's grief is symbolic of the love that one has for family members. Key quotes include, she was buckets and water flouncing into them. She was winds pouring wetly. Getting angry, getting angry, with so many questions unanswered. In Assisi, Symbolism is used here in order to show the hypocrisy of the church and St Francis's beliefs to help those less fortunate than himself is symbolised by the church. Key quotes include three tiers of churches and a rush of tourists clucking contentedly fluttered after him as he scattered the green of the word. In Visiting Hour, the hospital environment is used to symbolise death and the grief that goes along with this. Key quotes include, what seems a corpse is trundled into a lift and vanishes heavenward. The distance of pain that neither she nor I can cross. And in Brooklyn Cop, the cop symbolises the violence and danger of New York streets. Key quotes include, built like a gorilla, he walks the sidewalk in the thin tissue over violence. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence and 
and who would be who have to be his victims. In Hotel Room 12th Floor, McCaig uses the setting of New York City in order to symbolise the dangers of the modern world. Key quotes include a helicopter skirting like a damaged insect, that jumbo-sized dentist drill, harsh screaming from cold water flats, the blood glazed on the sidewalk, and the frontier is never somewhere else. And in Basking Shark, McCaig symbolises the so-called superiority of humans and how dangerous humans are through his depiction of the shark. Key quotes include that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain, and so who's the monster? In Aunt Julia, McCaig uses darkness in order to contrast the happiness he felt with his aunt to the darkness he feels having to accept her death. Key quotes include, hers was the only house where I've lain at night in the absolute darkness of a box bed listening to crickets being friendly. And by the time I had learned a little, she lay silenced in the absolute black of a sandy grave. In Assisi, contrast is used to show the outward beauty of the church compared to the ugliness of the dwarf. It's also used to show the contrast between the beggar's outer attractiveness and his inner beauty. It's also used to show how powerful the church is and how weak the beggar is. Key quotes include hands on backwards, three tiers of churches, tiny twisted legs, said Grazie in a voice as sweet as a child's when she speaks to her mother, over whom he had the advantage of not being dead yet, and a rush of tourists, clucking contentedly, fluttered after him as he scattered the grain of the word. Remember to pause the video and take any notes that you need to. Contrast is also used in Visiting Hour. It's used here to show the vulnerability and emotion that McCaig feels and the strength of the nurses. He also uses contrast in the slightness of the nurses, coupled with their inability to carry huge emotional weight. Key quotes include, I will not feel, I will not feel until I have to. Their eyes still clear after so many farewells. Nurses walking lightly, swiftly, here and up and down, their slender waists, and carrying their burden of so much pain. Also occurs in Brooklyn Cop, as McCaig uses contrast to show the cop's brutish nature of work and his gentler side at home. Key quotes include, built like a gorilla but less timid, and when he said, see you babe, to his wife, he hoped it, he truly hoped it. Contrast is also used in hotel room 12th floor, and this time the quietness of the persona's hotel room contrasts with the chaos outside on the streets of New York City. Key quotes include, I lie in bed between a radio and a television, and hear the wildest of war whoops continually ululating through the glittering canyons and gulches. In Baskin Shark, the shark may appear physically menacing, however, this contrasts with how harmless the shark actually is. Key quotes include, that room-sized monster with a matchbox brain. And so who's the real monster? So we've now had a really comprehensive look at the different techniques and the different themes that link Aunt Julia to the other poems studied. So now we need to think about how we're going to structure our 10 mark answer. We know that the commonality is only worth a maximum of two marks. We can only achieve a maximum of two marks for the provided poem and six marks for the other poems studied. It is much easier to achieve the final six marks available by providing six individual points. So if you look at the structure on the right hand side, now your teacher may have given you something similar or this may be totally new to you. You don't have to use this as a template. It's just an idea for you to think about how you may wish to structure your 10 mark answer. For the commonality, Always refer to the provided poem first, so in poem one, so we know that that's going to be in Aunt Julia. McCake discusses, then give us a summary of the poem in relation to the question. On the other hand, link to question, remember to always use your own words here, is also portrayed in poem two, so any of the other five studied. But this time, 
then give me a summary of the poem in relation to the question using your own words. So that's how we would achieve the first two marks for the commonality. We now need to refer to the extract, so Aunt Julia, twice. So, quote, stick the technique, analyse, then link to the question, and do that twice. Then you must refer to another, at least one other poem by McCaig that we've studied. And similarly, quote, state the technique, analyse and link to the question. And you must do that six times. So that will get you full marks, okay? So remember to analyse as fully as possible, not to assume too much knowledge of your marker, so provide context and use your own words where appropriate. Okay. Now you may use another template or you, you may use um, just a more natural writing style and that's absolutely fine. But you may use that if you wish to. Now that you've completed lots of comprehensive revision on Aunt Julia, the best thing to do is complete past papers from the SQA website. Good luck! Thinking about our next steps, keep going over your notes for all poems. Create cue cards to help you remember the analysis for the most important quotations from each poem and complete as many past papers as possible. Then hand them in to your teacher to mark to get the most robust feedback on your progress to date.